Hello and welcome to Just Board, the show about computers, microcontrollers, and more. Today we'll take a look at a personal favorite of mine, the Arduino Nano. This is a development board for the AppMega 328, which is an 8-bit AVR microcontroller with a clock speed of 16 MHz. The board contains 2 kilobytes of SRAM. This is a type of quick access memory that gets reset when the device reboots. For the most part, this is where things like your program variables and the function call stack are stored. The board also contains 32 kilobytes of flash memory, which is where your actual program gets stored. You can also use this space to store constant data, such as large strings and arrays. Flash memory is not reset when the device reboots, so the next time you power your board up, your program will still be there. And finally, there's one kilobyte of EEP ROM which is similar to flash memory in that it persists between reboots. But while flash is meant to only be written at compile time, EEP ROM is meant to be written at runtime. So if you have some data that you need to change as your program runs, and you need those changes to persist between reboots, then this is where you should start. There are 36 through-hole pins on the Nano. Eight of them are analog input pins, capable of reading anywhere between 0 and 5 volts. 14 of them can be used as digital I.O. pins operating at 5 volts. Of these 14 digital pins, there are 6 pins capable of performing pulse width modulation. This is good for things like servos and RGB LEDs. Another 2 of the digital pins are capable of being used as external interrupts. The board can be powered directly from its USB mini port. Or, if you have a regulated power supply outputting 5 volts, you can also power the board through the pin labeled 5V. And finally, if you have an unregulated power supply outputting anywhere between 7 and 12 volts, you can power the board through the pin labeled VN. You'll also notice that there are four onboard LEDs. Two of them are RX-TX indicators to show I.O. activity. One of them is the power indicator, and the fourth one is for you. It's a user programmable LED. Finally, the board also contains a reset button. The most common way to program the Nano, as with most Arduinos, is to use the open source Arduino IDE, which runs on Windows, Linux, and Macs. The IDE contains all of the software you need to get started, including a code editor, a compiler, a way to copy your compiled code to the board, and all of the standard Arduino libraries. There's also a way to add third-party libraries if the standard ones don't have what you need. The IDE also contains a built-in serial terminal and graph plotting tool, which can both be really useful for debugging. Like most Arduinos, you can also buy add-on boards to connect to, known as shields, but the Nano doesn't really have as many options for shields as the larger Arduino boards. This makes sense. The Nano was clearly designed to be small and easy to embed in projects. If you do want to add functionality or interface with other devices, it's more common that you would solder directly to the pins on the board, or solder on a set of header pins, like this one, so that it can fit on a breadboard. I always keep at least one with a header like this to quickly test things. These boards are perfect for adding programmable logic to your projects, whether you want to read some sensors, control some LEDs, servos, or other peripherals. These are pretty capable boards. But I'd say the major advantage is that there's a really active community of makers and hobbyists using them, so it's incredibly easy to find examples and tutorials to get started. I've found that almost anything I can think of to do with them, someone else has already done something similar, and I can use their work as a reference point. For that reason, these boards are perfect for beginners looking to get into microcontrollers. They aren't the cheapest, fastest, smallest, and they don't have the most I.O. pins, but they are a really practical compromise overall. First off, this is a microcontroller board, and not a single board computer. So if you're expecting all of the SBC jazz and operating systems, you're looking in the wrong place. It also doesn't have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or Ethernet, so they're not the best candidate for Internet of Things devices. And yes, there are breakout boards and shields for that stuff, but you get to a point where it's usually more practical to grab something like a Pi Zero if that's what you're trying to do. And despite having 8 analog input pins, these boards don't have any analog output pins. For some components, you can fake it with pulse width modulation. And remember, there are 6 digital pins for that. But for more precise components, you would need to add a small circuit to do the digital to analog conversion. Well, that's it for the Arduino Nano. 
Be sure to go down to the comments below and let me know what board you want to see covered next. And now, a musical piece I call the Relay Remix, being performed by none other than the Arduino Nano.